we get dirty and the world stays clean. That's the mission. You can't know war unless you have fought arse over an elbow in some shit bog full of traps. For modern warfare, expectations are so high that coming in and reimagining it from the top to the bottom is humbling, to say the least. I'm Taylor Kurosaki, the studio narrative director at Infinity Ward. Now, it's my job to make sure this game is everything the fans expect and hopefully a lot more. Today, I have an opportunity to sit down and chat with someone who has a similar challenge and responsibility, and that is Barry Sloan, the guy that's bringing to life one of the most beloved characters in the Call of Duty series. Thanks for being here. Of course, mate. It's a pleasure. What was it like for you to be put into this role, and how does that relate to your experiences of playing Call of Duty in the past? I was very drawn from, from Call of Duty 4, the first one more when that came out. I had that as part of my upbringing, my, my, my childhood, and then to become him um, has been just an incredible experience. I knew that if we found a guy who could exude what I think we all have in our collective memory of a guy that is Price, yeah. the, the ceiling would be way higher. And I think that's what we got with you. And I, I, obviously I wasn't aware because you weren't saying it, it was Captain Price, you were just saying, I can't remember the name on the audition, but it was... It was Commander it was, it was, Sykes. Yeah. I knew in that moment, I felt like, okay, this is the guy. This is our Price. I wanted to be able to drop your voice into a real thing that we were working on. Okay. And so I couldn't have you say, under my command, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Commander Sykes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I crossed out Commander Sykes, and I probably shouldn't have done this. It's probably a total breach of protocol uh, and whatever. It. But I was—I just wanted to hear your voice saying those words. Yeah. So I crossed it out, yeah. and I wrote, under my command, Captain John, John Price. Price. Yeah. And I do remember saying, oh, that's a name drop. <laughs> that second, I was like, OK, here we go. Under my command. Captain John Price, you will have full execute authority. One of the most exciting things for me is the is the collaborative nature of what it takes to make this. Yeah. And how many people are responsible for the performance. And I remember speaking to Mitch, who's our um, our, our technical advisor who I'd worked with before, and he said, you know, no one man can play Price. It takes an army, and it's very much that. And it has been from day one. You know, I'm the first guy to ever get to physically move him. So I had to find a way to make this guy real and, and believable. And, and a guy for, who can work in a 2019 scenario. Above all else, he is a protector and he is a guide. But I wanted to make sure that in every scene I'm checking in on the person that I'm with. But I tried to make this price be someone who you would aspire to be. Well, it's not over yet. Trust me. I always have. For you, I mean, you've got not just one character's work to worry about. You have the entire franchise on sure. your shoulders. How did you feel about having to take that on? Our goal was to make a game that gave all those feelings that we've had playing the original series, because we have to not just exceed the expectations of what those other games were, we have to exceed the expectations of what your memories were of playing those games. Nostalgia is a tough battle. <laughs> yeah. We didn't want it to just be another one. We didn't want it to just be, eh, it's close enough to the original games. A bunch of the original guys that made Modern Warfare heard that we were working on it, and they were like, I want to be part of that. So we got a new an infusion of the original blood. And so I think we were prepared to take on this this huge undertaking and this huge honor. As someone who who is a fan of gaming, who plays, although I'm filming it, I'm still not part of the process of making them. You've taken what was the acceptable level in this genre and put it somewhere that people are now gonna have to try and get close to it because it's blown my mind what I've seen. I didn't expect it to look as incredible as it does. It's, it's really, really special. What can you breathe? We just did. So let's talk about embodying the man, yeah. right? Being on the PCAP stage, mm -hmm. making a, a TV show or a film versus making a game and what that experience means to you. There's much more parallels to theater and video game 
because you're being asked to dispel belief in this in a similar way mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's that you you know you're going into a make-believe world quite clearly you're separated from it but your brain allows you to believe aspects are real you can almost touch it these days with the way video games look and so that aspect of bringing your audience to you is it feels like theater to me in that sense as well and certainly the way we film it because you know when you're on a film set or a tv set you know you know you know, like now, I can look at the camera, I can speak to the operator, and I can know, okay, this is probably a tight shot. Hopefully I'm getting it right somewhere around here to about here. I know I've got about this much space, and then my frame cuts off. So I can manage my shot or my performance for that particular shot. But when we shoot PCAP, we have the whole room. Yeah. And I don't know what point you're going to come in for the close-up of pricing here or when, when you're going to need to be super wide to get the, 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 the feel of the scenes. You have to be on the whole time. You have to know the man or the woman that you're playing and be in there, locked in the whole time, because it could be on you when you don't expect it. Like, Jeff will be there with the camera making the shots, but that's not necessarily the shot. Yeah. You can't play to that camera because it's not there, so it's like you have to just let him direct you through but not react to the camera being there. We're all just pawns in this. You speak for yourself. Talk about the training you went through with Mitch. It was tough, man. Mitch and Steve, they both served in the SEAL teams. And their way of educating actors is to literally drop you into the most realistic version that is possible. A lot of my technique is from him. Like, just in general, my shooting technique, my, my the way I clean rooms, come from his techniques. Get down on the fucking floor now! Get down! Get down on the fucking floor! Stay there! I mean, the, the, the war genre in general, it's a source of pressure yeah. for characters, right? You know this better than anyone, that, that pressure oh. <laughs> reveals character. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to put our, our characters under, is under yeah. pressure so that they're forced to evolve. They're forced to overcome that obstacle and get out of their comfort zone. And so for us as creators to work in that genre, that's part of making Call of Duty, and to not only empathize with characters who are put under pressure and have to reveal their, their true nature and to be forced to make those kinds of choices and to do the thing that Mitch and Steve and those guys always say, which is to operate perfectly in an imperfect situation. But now you go here, here's the controller. Yeah, well, you try. Good luck. Yeah. It's been an honor working with you, ma'am, and uh, I hope we get to keep working together in the future. That's it, mate, absolutely. Yeah. Where do we draw the line, sir? Uh... You draw the line wherever you need it, Sergeant. With the first Modern Warfare, it was topical, raw. It spoke to the world around us. And I'm really honored to be creating new, exciting experiences in the Modern Warfare franchise. We knew that we couldn't just tell a story from the angle of the West. It's about different perspectives, everybody trying to get what they want. A lot about war has changed. It's not about good and evil. It's all shades of gray. There aren't sharp lines. Everything is life and death, and there are consequences. We get dirty, and the world stays clean. That's the mission. To get those different perspectives, we had to work with different consultants. We're trying to merge the authenticity from the actual battlefield and give the player something that they can invest in. If you've never been there and experienced it, you really can't even wrap your head around it. Having spent a lot of time in different conflicts around the world, I was able to give the creative team a deeper understanding of what it's like on the ground and what the civilians who have been caught in the crossfire are experiencing. The invaders of my country have no regard for human life. The story is so beautifully rendered and it's written with a lot of thought and care. It mirrors the world that we live in today. In our fictional country of Urzikstan, the superpowers, they can't fight directly. So instead, they fight through proxies. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Nothing is ever straightforward. There are so many nuances. There's a gray area, and today's soldiers work in that space. They go out there and they do their best because they fight for what they believe in. The setup of this game is nerve gas gets stolen and may be in the hands of terrorists 
and players need to track it down and figure out who has it before it gets used against us or our allies. If you use these tactics, you are my enemy. No exceptions? None. How far are you willing to go? Where do you draw your line? And that's the question that's posed to every character. You're gonna play as three different characters. We've got Sergeant Kyle Garrick. He is a SAS soldier working counterterrorism in London. We don't stand a chance in hell with these rules of engagement, Captain. They can tell us where, they can tell us when, don't tell us how. You've got Alex, he's a CIA operator. We gotta move now. He doesn't get to choose where he goes and what he fights for. He's a career soldier. And Farah, the commander of a liberation force. She really breaks the mold. She's grown up in a land under occupation and she has become the leader of the resistance. Farah says, I am only willing to do what is honorable. I would rather lose than win by doing something dishonorable. You'll be reintroduced to Captain Price, but we've given him more humanity. You want to fight side by side with him because you know that you're fighting with the best. We set ourselves the goal of making something that was as authentic as we possibly could. And a lot of this came from talking with our Navy SEAL consultants. We bring our expertise from careers in the military. And we work with every single department and take experiences we've had and apply them. We're trying to hit every detail. The way we moved up the stairwell and the stack where guys are covering every angle. The authenticity was addressed right off the bat. It's always been the primary focus. Our belief is that the more accurate we can make it, the more the player can invest in it. They said, if you want to tell a really important story, tell a story about imperfect men doing an imperfect job and being expected to do it perfectly. Secure. Where do we draw the line, sir? You draw the line wherever you need it. Soldiers are in really difficult situations. You have to process the information and make those split-second decisions. We've worked very hard to give players freedom to choose how these encounters are going down. Any further complications and we're at war. Well, that don't complicate it. to shed light on a whole other side of warfare. It's a big responsibility. Balancing that with an experience that is fun is exciting. It's incredible to navigate through these situations and to really feel like you're part of it. If you stay, we can help you. But if you stay, you fight. There's no uniforms. You don't know if the guy across the street has a gun or not. It's just as important to know when to pull the trigger as it is to know when not to pull the trigger. I want the players to appreciate the complexities, but I also want them to have fun. We're always after this feeling of the controller disappearing out of your hands, feeling like I'm experiencing it from the perspective of the character. That allows us to tell these deeper, richer, more immersive stories. And with Modern Warfare, we've, we've done that. End of the day, someone has to make the enemy scared of the dogs.